Welcome to another deep dive. Today we are heading to Central America for an exploration of exotic fruits. We're talking about <laughs> Belizean fruits so specifically. That's right, Belize. And uh, we have this incredible guide uh, that highlights 21 of them. It's a fascinating look at flavors you might not find yeah. at your average grocery store. Absolutely. So, like, when you think of Belize, you probably think beaches, right? Right, yeah. But uh, this guy dives into Belize's rich agricultural traditions. Yeah. So we're going to unpack some of the unique tastes, hmm. maybe some history and cultural insights. Absolutely. And, um, even and maybe even some practical tips. Oh, for sure. On how to experience these flavors yourself. I love that. Uh, okay. Let's dive into the fruit basket, shall we? Let's do it. All right. I'm familiar with the basics, you know, mangoes, papayas. But this guide, it's got some real hidden gems. Oh, it does. Have you ever tried a guaya? I have. They're like nature's little surprise packages. Uh, oh. You crack open that hard green shell, and there you find this sweet and tangy pulp. Like a cross between a lychee and a lime. Super refreshing. It's also called a gin up, right? It is. So it's like a little gin fizz in a fruit. Exactly. Now the dragon fruit, or pataya as it's called in Belize, that one's visually stunning, right? Absolutely. From the pictures. They look like something out of a fantasy novel. Vivid pink or yellow skin with the speckled flesh. Oh. And the taste is quite delicate. Ooh. Hints of kiwi and watermelon. No wonder it's so popular in yeah. smoothies and breakfast bowls. Now speaking of bold flavors, hmm. The golden plum, uh, it says here, it's eaten with hot sauce. Yeah, that tartness paired with spice is a hallmark of Belizean cuisine. Really? Mm-hmm. In warmer climates, spices can actually stimulate appetite and aid in digestion. Oh. It's a great example of how food reflects its environment. It's not just about the taste. It's about the cultural context, right? Exactly. Belize's context is a fascinating blend of indigenous traditions and colonial influences. Right, because we always think of beaches, but it's so much more than that. It is. Belize has diverse landscapes, fertile soil. It's a haven for agriculture yeah. that has evolved over centuries. So beyond the beach, what are some examples? Well, take the sapodilla. This fruit, native to the region, was actually the original source of chewing gum. What? <laughs> the ancient Maya harvested the tree sap. It's called chicle. Wow. Chewing gum has such deep roots, literally. Right. And then there's breadfruit. Oh, yeah, breadfruit. A large, starchy fruit brought to the Caribbean from Polynesia ah. back in the 18th century. Okay. Now it has a complex history wow. because it was introduced as a readily available food source for enslaved populations. So food carries difficult histories, but also stories of resilience. Exactly. How is breadfruit used today? Incredibly versatile. It's a staple in Belizean cooking. Roasted, boiled, fried, or even baked. Wow. It takes on a mild, nutty flavor mm. that pairs well with many dishes. That's really cool. What about the cashew? I mean, everyone knows the nut. Yeah, everyone knows the nut. But this guide mentions the fruit itself is a local delicacy. Yes. This pear-shaped, juicy fruit that grows alongside the nut, it's sweet with a slightly tangy flavor. It's even used to make... Cashew wine? Cashew wine. That is going on my list of things to try. Oh, it's an experience. So we've got ancient Maya chewing gum, food introduced for enslaved populations, new flavors from European colonists like mangoes. Right. The Belizean fruit baskets are a real fusion of influences. Absolutely. And that fusion is what makes exploring it. Yeah. So fascinating. Each fruit offers a glimpse yeah. into a different layer of history and culture. Now let's talk about that cultural significance. Beyond just the culinary uses, are there any fruits that hold a special place in Belgian culture? Definitely. We talked about cacao earlier. Right, the sorts of chocolate. Highly prized by the ancient Maya for their ceremonial drink, a precursor to modern hot chocolate. So it's like tasting history. It is. Uh -huh. Belize is known for its high quality cacao. And you can even take tours to experience the entire chocolate making process from bean to bar. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. What other fruits play a role in Belizean culture? Well, there's the crabu, sometimes called nance, mm -hmm. a small yellow fruit with a strong aroma. It features prominently in traditional dishes, stews, desserts, okay. even a unique crabu ice cream. Crabu ice cream. Mm -hmm. That speaks to the creativity of Belizean cooking. Oh, absolutely. And speaking of resourcefulness, okay. let's not forget the guava oh, yeah. enjoyed fresh, juiced, or in smoothies. But locals also slice it and sprinkle it with salt or chili powder. Mm -hmm. That sweet, salty, spicy combination. It's classic Belizean cuisine. 
Belizeans have a knack for combining flavors in unexpected ways. They do. It reflects their adventurous spirit and a deep connection to the land and its bounty. So how can our listeners start experiencing these flavors? Where can we find these fruits if we aren't planning a trip to Belize? Well, many of them can be found in specialty markets, particularly those specializing in tropical produce. And if we can't find them locally... The internet has made it easier than ever to access exotic fruits. Many online retailers specialize in sourcing tropical produce. Huh. So there's really no excuse not to be adventurous. <laughs> That's the spirit. Trying new foods is a chance to connect with different cultures, learn about new traditions, and broaden your culinary horizons. Absolutely. We've covered some fascinating ground here from ancient Maya chewing gum to the unexpected delight of cashew fruit. There's so much more to explore in this world of Belizean fruits. We'll be back in just a moment to delve into even more exotic flavors and the stories they hold. Stay tuned. Welcome back to our Belizean fruit exploration. I'm ready for more exotic flavors. What other treasures await us in this guide? Now that we've tasted some of the more well-known fruits, let's venture into the realm of the less familiar. Okay. Have you ever heard of the Malay apple? The name rings a bell, but I can't say I've ever tasted one. Yeah. What's the story behind this mysterious fruit? It's quite a journey. The Malay apple is originally from Southeast Asia, hmm? but it was brought to Belize by colonial settlers and flourished in the tropical climate. It has vibrant red or pink skin, and it looks like a cross between an apple and a pear. It's fascinating how fruits can travel across continents. Yeah. And become integrated into different cultures. Yeah, it is. What about the taste? Does it live up to its name? It's actually quite mild and refreshing, with a subtle sweetness and a satisfyingly crisp texture. Mm. It has a delicate flavor similar to a regular apple. Okay. But with a juicier bite. I'm picturing a refreshing bite on a hot day. Speaking of which, I'm intrigued by the sea grape grapes that grow by the sea. It is quite remarkable. That's incredible. These small, round clusters of purplish grapes thrive along the beaches of Belize, perfectly adapted to the salty air and sandy soil. Imagine strolling along the coast wow. and finding these juicy treats growing right there on the shore. That sounds like a true taste of the tropics. Mm. Are they similar in taste to the grapes we typically find in grocery stores? They are grapes, but with a uniquely tropical twist. They're much sweeter than your typical grape, Okay. with a hint of tartness to balance the sugar. I can see why they'd be the perfect beachside snack. Sweet, refreshing, and readily available. Now, one fruit that really caught my eye in this guide is the star fruit. It's literally shaped like a star. It truly is nature's art. How cool is that? The star fruit, or carambola, as it's also known, gets its name from its five-pointed cross-section. And when you slice it, you get these beautiful star-shaped pieces. Oh. It's a feast for the eyes as well as the taste buds. I'm already thinking of all the fun ways to use it in drinks and desserts. What about the flavor? Is it as exotic as its appearance? The taste is just as delightful. Okay. It's a balanced blend of sweet and sour with a tangy edge that keeps things interesting. It seems like a lot of these Belizean fruits have that sweet and tart combination. It makes perfect sense when you consider the tropical climate. That balance of sweetness and acidity is incredibly refreshing in a hot environment. Yeah. And it lends itself to some really creative culinary possibilities. Absolutely. We've talked about the history and unique flavors of these fruits, but I'm curious to learn more about how they're used in Belizean cuisine. What are some specific examples from our guide? Well, we discussed breadfruit earlier, and it's a great example of versatility. Not only does it have a fascinating history, right. but it's also a culinary chameleon. In what way? Because of its starchy texture and mild flavor, it can be prepared in so many ways. Okay. Roasting brings out its nutty notes, while boiling or frying creates a softer texture, perfect for incorporating into various dishes. It really does live up to its name. And what about the crabu? I mentioned it's used in stews, but the guide mentions other interesting applications as well. It's true. The crabby's unique flavor profile makes it an incredibly versatile ingredient in Belize in cooking. It's used in both savory and sweet dishes. Wow. Showcasing the creativity and resourcefulness of Belizean cooks. In fact, it's a key ingredient in a very special Belizean ice cream. Crabu ice cream. We mm. talked about this earlier, and I'm even more intrigued now. Mm. What a unique way to showcase local flavors. It's a testament to the Belizean culinary spirit of embracing and transforming what the land provides. I love that. And speaking of transformations, the cashew fruit, aside from its delicious wine, yes. is also a star on its own. It's enjoyed fresh, and its sweet and tangy flavor makes it perfect for jams and preserves. I love how these fruits are more than just snacks. They're integral parts of the culinary landscape. And this guide mentions the soursop having 
not just culinary uses, but also medicinal properties. That's right. What's the story there? The soursop is revered for its unique flavor yeah. and its traditional use in addressing various ailments. Mm. It's been used to help with everything, from digestive issues to skin conditions. It's fascinating how food can be so intertwined with health and wellness in traditional cultures. It speaks to a holistic view of well-being. Yeah. Recognizing the interconnectedness of food, the body, and nature. Yeah. Of course, it's important to note that while traditional knowledge is valuable, right. it's always a good idea to consult with a healthcare professional for any health concerns. Absolutely. But it's so interesting to learn about these traditional uses mm. and how they've been passed down through generations. So we've explored the history, the flavors, the culinary uses of these Belizean fruits. What are some key takeaways for our listeners who might be feeling inspired to try these exotic tastes? Well, the first takeaway is simple. Be adventurous. Okay. Don't be afraid to step outside of your culinary comfort zone and embrace new flavors. You might be surprised by what delights your palate. That's such great advice. It's easy to stick to what we know, but there is a whole world of flavor out there waiting to be discovered. Exactly. And remember, trying new foods isn't just about satisfying your taste muds. Right. It's an opportunity to connect with different cultures, learn about new traditions, and broaden your culinary perspective. Where would you suggest listeners begin their search for these Belizean treasures? Specialty markets are a great place to start. Okay. Many of them carry a variety of tropical fruits, and the staff are often knowledgeable and can offer suggestions. And if we can't find what we're looking for locally? The online world is a fantastic resource. Many online retailers specialize in exotic fruits. Oh, okay. Making it easier than ever to explore fruits from around the globe. They can deliver these unique flavors right to your doorstep. So there's really no excuse not to embark on our own Belizean fruit adventure. I wholeheartedly agree. And remember, every bite is a chance to savor not just the taste, but also the history, culture, and natural world that went into producing it. Beautifully said. We'll be back in a moment to wrap up our deep dive into the exotic world of Belizean fruits. Stay tuned for some final thoughts and inspiration on how to bring these delicious discoveries into your own life. Welcome back to our Belizean fruit fiesta. I'm feeling so inspired to add some tropical flair to my kitchen after all we've learned. I'm glad to hear it. We've journeyed through history, tasted exotic flavors, and explored culinary traditions. Now it's all about bringing that Belizean spirit into your everyday life. Exactly. Yeah. Let's say I've managed to track down some of these amazing fruits, maybe at a local market or through an online retailer. Mm -hmm. What are some creative ways to enjoy them beyond just slicing and dicing? Well, the simplest way to enjoy many of these fruits is in their natural state. Mangoes, papayas, pineapples. Oh, yeah. They're bursting with flavor on their own. But if you're looking to get a bit more adventurous, the possibilities are endless. I'm all for adventure. What kind of culinary creations are we talking about? Smoothies are a fantastic way to incorporate these fruits. Okay. Imagine a blend of mango soursop and a touch of lime. It's vibrant and refreshing. Ooh. A great way to start the day. That's a great idea for breakfast. Uh. We're a quick snack. But what about something a little more unexpected? We've talked about crabu ice cream. Is that yeah. something I could actually try making at home? Absolutely. It might sound exotic, but it's surprisingly achievable. Really? You can experiment with other fruits too, like soursop or even sapodilla, to create your own unique tropical ice cream flavors. That's such a fun way to explore these fruits and get creative in the kitchen. What other culinary adventures would you recommend? Think about incorporating these fruits into your salads. Diced mango or pineapple adds a burst of sweetness and a tropical twist to a savory salad. I love that idea. It's a simple way to elevate an everyday dish. And don't forget about salsas. Chopped papaya, pineapple, or even star fruit can create a vibrant and flavorful salsa that pairs perfectly with grilled fish or chicken. My case buds are tingling just imagining those flavor combinations. It's amazing how versatile these fruits are. Exactly. They're not limited to desserts or sweet treats. They can add depth and complexity to savory dishes as well. We've also talked about the deliciousness of fresh juices. What are some combinations you'd recommend for a taste of the tropics? Pineapple and coconut water are a classic pairing. It's like being transported to a Belizean beach. Ooh. Or try a blend of mango and lime for a tangy and refreshing twist. Okay, those are definitely gone on my list of must-try beverages. Hmm. And of course, we can't forget about cashew wine. It's a truly unique experience. And mm -hmm. if you're feeling really ambitious, you could even try your hand at making your own fruit wine using some of these tropical fruits. Now that's a culinary challenge I might be ready to tackle one day. It's all about embracing the spirit of exploration and experimentation in the kitchen. Who knows what delicious creations you might come up with. As we wrap up our deep dive into the world of blizzing fruits, 
What's the one key message you hope our listeners take away from this journey? Food is a powerful way to connect with different cultures and broaden our understanding of the world. Stepping outside of our culinary comfort zones and trying new things can open up a world of flavor and experience. That's beautifully said. And who knows, maybe this deep dive will inspire some of our listeners to plan their own Belizean adventure someday. Imagine strolling through those bustling markets, surrounded by the sights and smells of all these amazing fruits. It's a sensory experience that's not to be missed. I'm officially adding Belize to my travel bucket list. But in the meantime, I'm going to head to my local market and see what tropical treasures I can unearth. That's the spirit. Remember, every bite is an opportunity to savor the flavors of history, culture, and the natural world. And on that note, we'll bid you farewell. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those taste buds tingling.